Hi there, everyone. Okay, so uh, yeah, I'm here from uh, Bleacon. We build uh, IoT connectivity using Bluetooth Low Energy. Um, so that's uh, very relevant to people who have um, been using beacons and um, wanting to build networks for smart beacons. So that's what I'm going to uh, talk about. Um, so hopefully some of you uh, uh, recognize beacons. Um, uh, Bluetooth Low Energy was introduced in um, 4.0. The first phone was the iPhone 4S. They introduced this technology. Um, and they really took off when Apple um, added um, iBeacon support to iPhone. So um, th this is uh, something that enabled proximity awareness for sort of uh, consumer marketing applications. And, you know, hot on their tails, Google um, replicated that with something called Eddystone. Uh, and yeah, as I said, these are Bluetooth low energy devices uh, transmitting, so a phone can work out uh, that they come nearby and um, trigger things like interactions. So the classic example used in the keynote was um, you come near a Starbucks, it gives you a voucher, something like that. But the other use cases where you're walking around a museum, it's telling you about exhibits and things like that. So you have a fixed beacon in a location and these people walking around with phones are, are, are getting uh, reactions because um, of this sort of locationing system. Um, so that, that was its origins. That's what got it into all the operating systems. So the iOS, Android. Um, but what was very interesting was the killer app looked a bit different. Um, so actually in industry, uh, they applied this technology the other way around. So same Bluetooth low energy technology using advertising for beacons. But in this case, the things detecting the beacons were fixed. That was infrastructure, um, locations and things like that. Um, but the beacons were being attached to objects that it wanted to track. So it's actually the, the beacons that were moving rather than the, the detectors. Um, and this is, this is great if you're used to cellular and GPS, you know, very expensive technologies. Um, Bluetooth, low energy, incredibly cheap. You can run it off batteries. This, this really exploded um, for asset tracking. Um, and you can see that sort of the market um, being driven primarily by this sort of function is, has just exploded. Um, not so visible in the consumer space, um, uh, but, but absolutely exploding in things like asset, asset tracking and things like that. Um, so that really drove um, mainstream adoption in industry of this technology. Um, but if you think to why they came to exist, it was effectively a, a beaconing technology for marketing that found a really interesting um, other application. There's actually some limitations. So these are broadcast only things. They, they broadcast a Bluetooth um, low energy advertising packet and something detects it. There's, uh, there's, no, um, there's no, not much payload you can actually put in that packet. You're just repeating the same packet again and again so that someone knows you're there. Maybe a bit of information about the thing that's broadcasting. And there's no ability for the system to confirm that that message has been heard. So you have to assume it's been heard and that's, that uh, translates to the behavior of these sorts of um, beacons. Um, there's no security. It was a marketing application originally. It's just an identity. It doesn't seem, you know, it's not ne uh, necessary. Um, but there's actually no way for a receiver to uh, identify the device is really who it says it is. Um, and because there's no communication channel, you know, you don't have to worry about channel security because there is no channel. Um, so you can see that uh, as these things start to become more critical, um, it does become uh, a bit of a problem. Um, and, then, and then you also have some deployment challenges. So um, because these beacons are just transmitting and they're assuming someone is listening, um, the way you have to deploy the coverage uh, to detect these beacons has to be um, pretty explicit um, because if you don't hear the message, it's gone forever. Um, and because it's a, there's no communication channel, there's no way to remotely manage these devices. So once they've gone out into the field, you have to uh, go and uh, perform an intervention to, let's say, update them or configure them or something like that. Uh, but it's like all great things. It's a great technology and, it, and it's almost been pushed beyond where it was originally um, imagined. So um, these limitations are no surprise. Something successful is being pushed beyond, uh, you know, what, almost what its capabilities were defined to, uh, to do. Um, and then more recently, uh, something has um, come in with uh, uh, the Find My network for Apple. So this has really helped people imagine, oh, actually, there's different ways of deploying infrastructure to detect these things. So Apple exploited all the phones that were already out there um, in your hands that you're, uh, you're talking about now to actually be infrastructure. 
So you have a very, a very um, cost-effective way of deploying effectively a network infrastructure um, that has already dealt with uh, differences in different countries. They already have cellular plans. Uh, people are already encouraged to charge up these mobile cell towers uh, because of you know Instagram or TikTok or something like that. Um, and and this has really demonstrated the power of being able to deploy infrastructure in very flexible ways. So all of these things have have triggered people to. Um, Think, well, how, how can you take beacons on the, the next journey? Um, and the drivers that uh, we see a lot uh, with people coming to us and looking for uh, what they're, they're looking for in the next generation of beacons, you know, it's all rooted in a demand for data. So beacons historically have been location triggers, but actually you want to find out, well, what is this thing doing? Um, has it had impact? Uh, how, how have conditions through a supply chain um, changed and things like that? Uh, you want to do that with time. You know, something goes out into a supply chain, you want to know when it happens. You know, that might inf infer whose insurance, uh, you know, a problem in supply chain goes, goes into. There's obviously security problems. Once data is flowing, you have the classic uh, problems of security of, uh, that come with that, uh, both encryption um, and things like that. So data is, uh, can be protected, but also integrity. So attestation, so you, you know it really is the device you're talking to and things like that. Um, and of course, once you have communication and data, or you want to do more processing on the edge, uh, which means you want to get data to uh, train models, you want to be able to maintain the devices, you want to be able to do OTA. They, they basically become much more like a classical IoT device. Um, and, then, and then I guess what's, what's interesting is a, a lot of people have thought of beacons as discrete devices, um, but actually as they get smarter, it becomes more apparent why integrating that technology into a product itself becomes valuable. So not, not just for cost reasons and you know, uh, the logistical reasons of having to attach things, but actually you can tap into the internals of a product. Um, and often it's cheaper to put a technology into a product that can then convince someone to buy an additional product to attach. Um, so, so the kind of customers we're talking to are obviously the classic beacon guys wanting to do more. Um, but what is very interesting to me is the, uh, the, the movement towards wanting to actually just integrate sort of smart beacon technology into products themselves. Um, so yeah, this is, this is the, uh, uh, I guess, trends and the kind of um, requirements that we see people implementing. So a lot of people are implementing this technology in-house at the moment um, where they have the capabilities to do so. So they are looking much more like an IoT product. They're, they're, thinking about two-way communication, they're thinking about payloads, being able to synchronize data, being able to pull down a new firmware um, or a configuration. Um, they care not just about location, but also time. So if you, if you know position in space and time, that's incredibly powerful. Um, so for the cost of the Bluetooth chip, you're kind of getting GPS and real-time uh, capabilities, which allow you to associate that with data. Um, security, I think, is pretty obvious. But you know, unlike Bluetooth, you don't want to pair um, because uh, you're wanting to work more like a, a cellular model. Um, and of course, the scalability, not just of the network infrastructure, but actually how you deploy infrastructure. Um, yeah, so really interesting requirements, all rooted from that kind of the beacon um, view of the world. Um, and, and we're obviously building um, technology to support um, these smart beacons. So we've uh, built a Bluetooth low energy network um, it's a cloud service with secure identity, uh, secure communication, uh, global location built in and global time. Um, you know, much like a sort of find my network, uh, but it's designed to be integrated into industrial cloud backends rather than a consumer experience. Um, so these are the sort of things where we found building this in is really um, becoming very attractive to um, people wanting to exploit this sort of technology. Um, and in a similar way to how uh, Find My allows deployment of uh, network infrastructure, what's interesting is there's a whole host of ways you can deploy infrastructure with Bluetooth. It's, it's so um, prevalent. So of course you can fit gateways like you would a Wi-Fi gateway or a LoRa gateway, but you can go and enable the Android barcode scanner in a warehouse that everyone's carrying around the warehouse already or the um, Android device everyone's already walking around the construction site. So it's a really interesting uh, model and in our case, we're not even selling coverage. We're just selling the ability for um, a customer to deploy uh, coverage. Anyway, yeah, so this, this is, I guess, the, uh, the crux of what we're seeing in a shift 
um, you know, iBeacon and Eddystone really promoted this uh, capability of Bluetooth and applying it to um, physical um, IoT rather than consumer electronics. Um, and but the de the success almost has driven these demands as people look to um, you know build what is more a, a classic um, IoT application. Um, if you want to uh, learn any more about what we're uh, seeing, um, we're just over there. We have a, a booth. Um, uh, feel free to come and uh, talk to us. But hopefully that gives you a, a bit of a picture of the, some of the trends we're seeing um, in smart beacons.